Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yes, we can hear you. And we can see you on a, what's that? 25 foot screen? Wow. <laughs> 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 so, uh, over to you. So, thank you. Well, I, thank you so much uh, for inviting me, and I'm, I'm really so sad that I can't be with you in person, uh, unfortunately, due to this, uh, this canceled flight. Um, it, it really is such, such an honor to, to be able to speak uh, alongside such courageous survi survivors uh, of the horrors of nuclear weapons testing. Uh, I'm Alicia. I work for the International Campaign to Abolish Nuclear Weapons. Uh, here in Geneva, uh, where a big part of our work is, is trying to share the stories of those who have been impacted by the use and testing of nuclear weapons, uh, the true experts on what these weapons are and, and what they do. I personally am a, a relative newcomer to the campaign, uh, having just been with ICANN for the past two years, but many of my colleagues uh, have been in this fight for decades. And over just the past several years, uh, ICANN has been working to negotiate and adopt the first international treaty banning nuclear weapons. The Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons was adopted in 2017 at the UN, uh, and it now has 86 signatories and 59 state parties. Uh, although, unfortunately, as was mentioned earlier today, the nuclear arms states uh, is are not among those, those countries that have joined the treaty. But it did enter into force uh, and take full legal effect uh, just uh, early last year. So at the core uh, of this treaty really is the recognition of the unacceptable humanitarian consequences of any use, including, of course, testing of nuclear weapons. This treaty uh, was born out of the deep concern of the world's governments at the growing threat that nuclear weapons pose to human survival, to the environment, to socioeconomic development, the global economy, food security, uh, and the health and welfare of future generations. There is a result to work together to challenge this dangerous status quo and to work to bring the era of nuclear weapons to a permanent end. This nuclear weapons ban treaty greatly strengthened the global taboo against the use and possession of nuclear weapons, rejecting the idea that these weapons are acceptable uh, instruments of security for some countries. And history shows that the prohibition of certain types of weapons facilitates progress towards their elimination. Weapons that have been prohibited by international treaties are increasingly seen as illegitimate, losing their political status and, along with it, the resources for their production. Arms companies find it more difficult to acquire funds to work uh, on illegal weapons, and such work carries a reputation risk. Many major banks and other financial institutions have already begun divesting the nuclear weapons producers to comply with this new international law. Underpinning this decision by governments and civil society to pursue this nuclear weapons ban treaty was the belief that changing the rules regarding nuclear weapons would have a profound impact even beyond those countries willing to join the treaty in the beginning. And this belief stems from the experience with other treaties prohibiting other inhumane weapons, uh, which have established powerful norms that influence the policies and practices even of holdout states with weapons that don't join this treaty. Uh, the Nuclear Weapons Ban Treaty offers the best hope of spurring long overdue meaningful action on nuclear disarmament. Uh, I'd like to talk about it, a key part of the treaty um, that's been mentioned uh, earlier today, uh, Article 6 and 7 on providing uh, victim assistance and compensation for survivors of nuclear weapons use and, and testing. This treaty is really groundbreaking as the first international nuclear weapons treaty to require that states parties provide this assistance to uh, all people impacted by nuclear weapons use and testing, uh, and also that they start to remediate and clean up uh, nuclear weapon contaminated environments. Assistance to the victims of nuclear weapons can come in many forms, 
uh, including medical care, rehabilitation, and psychological support. Countries must also provide for uh, survivors of nuclear weapons use and testing, social and economic inclusion. And these obligations uh, for states to provide assistance apply not only to the countries where um, there are people who are impacted by nuclear weapons use and testing, but actually all countries in the treaty uh, in a position to do so are required to, to help uh, provide this assistance where requested. Um, a number of countries where nuclear weapons were tested in the past have already joined the nuclear weapons ban treaty and have really uh, underscored the importance of meeting victims' needs and this, this part of the treaty. So I think notably uh, in understanding kind of how these articles work, um, Article 6 places the primary responsibility with affected countries that have joined the treaty to provide assistance uh, and to take steps towards remediating their own environments. Uh, and this is just following the precedent of previous treaties to essentially respect state sovereignty and acknowledge that perhaps these countries are the best place to determine how uh, services should be given within their own country. But uh, really crucially, Article 7 of the treaty requires that uh, all states parties to the treaty, uh, as well as other agencies and organizations, can assist and cooperate to help uh, affected states parties on providing assistance. So it's not just about adding a burden to states where they have already been harmed by nuclear weapons use and testing, but creating this mechanism and framework of solidarity to mobilize resources and actions to better address ongoing harm. It is worth noting that uh, since international law usually only binds countries that have essentially agreed to it uh, by ratifying the treaty, Article 6 and 7 do not uh, in and of themselves put obligations on states that have not joined the treaty. Uh, and it also doesn't impact existing uh, mechanisms for assistance in those countries. But this work and this process can involve countries that have not yet joined the treaty, including these armed states, who can contribute financially to assistance programs or improve their own national programs in line with this new uh, and hopefully higher international standard. Um, and this is something we saw, for example, in the United States never joined the, the treaty bank in the mines, but contributed significantly uh, to providing assistance for victims of, of landmines. And since the, the treaty took full effect early last year, states and civil society have really been starting to work on the plan for how to implement these articles. And we hope that the first meeting of states parties, all countries that have joined the treaty this summer, uh, will provide a, an opportunity to adopt a concrete action plan to begin to do so. There have already been a series of governmental and civil society discussions on how to implement the articles uh, and best address needs. And states affected by the weapons use and testing, including Kiribati uh, and Kazakhstan, have really been taking the lead uh, to develop this plan for implementation to be discussed, uh, hopefully this summer. Really at the center of the implementation implementation of this treaty must be the voices and experiences of impacted communities. Uh, in December, ICANN, together with uh, another part of Peace Boats, hosted the first World Nuclear Survivors Forum, uh, where survivors from all around the world came together to discuss the impact of nuclear weapons use and testing, as well as other broader harms, uh, and begin to input into the treaty's implementation process. And likewise, this seminar today is incredibly valuable uh, to learn from the, the experiences of the true experts of nuclear weapons, um, those who really know what nuclear weapons are and what they do, and to show the breadth of harm of nuclear weapons testing that must be addressed, not just um, to veterans themselves, but also for their families and their communities. So through the implementation of this treaty and awareness raising campaigns, uh, we at ICANN look forward to continuing to work with you so that these experiences are recorded and shared uh, and to work towards justice for all those harmed by nuclear weapons. Thank you so much uh, for inviting me to speak today. Thank you, Alicia. We will see you later as well. Yes, Alicia's going to do some closing remarks as well. So thank you very much.